one of the most productive and exciting ways to fish the saltwater for sea run cutthroats is to fish dry flies on the surface. So today I'm going to show you how to tie Jack Gartside's classic mini gurgler, which is one of the best and most proven patterns for the top water. Now without a doubt, the single best pattern for this type of fishing is the beach popper that was developed by Leyland Miyawaki. I've got one right here. So this pattern creates a wake on the surface and it wiggles and moves like a wounded fish. And if fly fishing were baseball, this popper would be your knuckleball. Unfortunately, like the knuckleball, this pattern is extremely difficult to hit. You get tons of strikes on it, fish are there, they're going to want to chase it and crash into it. But in my experience, it's really hard to get a hookup. For me, it's probably less than 1 in 10. Which brings us to this pattern, which isn't going to produce as many strikes, but it is more compact and it's got a fixed hook, and the fish are more likely to engulf it, resulting in relatively more hookups. Now, I've tied these in white, orange, green, and chartreuse, but it's my impression that the yellow one is the most effective color, so that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, a word about lines. So the foam in these flies creates a lot of air resistance and to cast them effectively it helps to use one of the specialized floating lines that have a very short and heavy head section. Uh, this one I use is Bank Shot by Orvis, but there are other similar lines out there. And with this I can easily throw these surface patterns 70 feet, which is quite long enough. And even though I've mostly stopped using the tapered leaders, I still use them for the poppers and gurglers in a 2x size, which helps me turn the flies over and get a good presentation. Okay, I'll take this one out. Uh, for my hook I'm going to use a Gamakatsu SP11, three long, three heavy. I don't go any bigger than size 8, but you could use size 6 for coho salmon. Although you could tie this on a standard length hook, I like the longer shank so that I don't crowd out the eye and just make it difficult to tie the fly on my leader. So once I've got that in my vise, I'll show you the thread, which is just white 140 weight UTC. You definitely don't want to go any lighter than that because you have to cinch that fly foam very tightly and you risk breaking a lighter thread. I'm going to start two eye lengths back from the eye and wind back until my thread is opposite the barb. That's it trim away the excess and the tail is going to be made from two different types of crystal flash a mixture of solid gold and here I've got pearl root beer yes. and I've already picked out and mixed together four strands of each of those and I'm going to cut off one end of that bunch so that the strands are flush. I'm going to measure it for length and I want the end of the tail to be about one entire hook length clear of the tie-in point. About there. So I'm going to secure these with some tight wraps. And about there, and then I'm going to gather all those front ends together and fold them back and then wrap over them again until I'm back at that original tie in point. Like so. I'll cut off the other half flush. So to make the back of the fly, I'm going to use this thin fly foam in yellow. Again, there are other color combinations you could try. I've cut myself a two inch strip, which I've measured at nine millimeters wide. And you can see I've tapered one end of it. And the length of that taper is about half the length of the hook shank. So I'll wind my thread back to about halfway, a bit more. So the end of that taper should line up with the uh, with the tail tie-in. Now I'm going to make tight turns to lash the foam onto the top of the hook. 
and you can see that the foam compresses quite easily if you exert enough tension on the thread. I'm just checking to make sure that the foam is centered whoops, along the shank. I'll check to see if I've bound it far enough back. I need to go back a few more wraps yet. There, that's right. Okay, just neatly tie that off. Oh, we'll leave we'll leave that there. Now the other body material is fluorescent yellow mylar chenille and I've lost the original package of this but I think it's cactus that I've got here in the large size you could use estaz or anything like that um, I've stripped one end of it to tie in here and then I'll wind it in tight turns just push that onto the shank leave my thread somewhere up there and then I'm gonna wrap this chenille until I've got probably like two-thirds of the way back to the eye of the hook should be enough and I'm gonna tie that off and then make sure that I tidy up the the loose fibers there at the front so that they don't foul um, they don't foul the eye I'll just cut that away now I'll take my foam and stretch that a little bit under tension so it goes over the top of the chenille and I'm going to take about eight or ten very very tight wraps right at a point about a quarter of the way along the shank from the front and then moving my thread to the front of the foam I'm gonna take some more wraps which will help to an anchor it in place and help that front part to stand up at an angle now three or more turns and we'll take a look to make sure everything's squared up and that looks that looks okay to me. I'm now going to add a collar or legs, I suppose they are, made from a mallard flank feather. Uh, you could make it quite short if you like, but I I prefer mine to extend back to just around the point of the hook. And to pre prepare my feather, I'm stripping away all of the fluff from the base of the quill. Just pulling that away till it looks like that. Now I'll isolate about a half an inch of the tip to serve as a tie-in point and I'm stroking back all the rest of those fibers away from the tip. Whoops. Okay, and then I'm going to cut off the tip square to about a quarter of an inch. So I can tie it in by the tip. There are still a few fibers in the way there. Now I'll tie it in and make uh, several tight wraps to ensure that it's all secure. That's good. Uh, now I'm going to stroke those back and then wrap the feather around the hook once. twice and that's probably going to be enough and I'll tie down that surplus stem front and back okay now I'm going to gather 
all of those fibers in my fingers and just just hold them back so I can wrap down on them this is where you just have to take your time until it looks the way you want it to That'll do me. I'm going to just get that stem and cut the excess away. And I'll take a few more turns over the feather and in front of the foam just to make sure it's all going to be secure and stand up. Right, and then I will add a whip finish. Now to finish the fly, I'm going to take it out of the vise and trim the front of that foam until it's about the same length as the gap of the hook. And I'm going to make the corners just rounded off a little bit. And that's the part that's going to make a wake in the water and, and give the fly its action along with those legs. I'll just return that to the vise so that I can add a little dab of super glue to that whip finish for security. And that's the mini gurgler finished. Now I find that this works best if you retrieve it only just fast enough to make a wake and send up the occasional little spit of water as it swims back through the ripples. You don't want to aggressively pop it through the water. You can cast it out at 12 o'clock and work it back across the current or cast it down, tie, uh, down tide and mend your line and retrieve it against the current. And if the fish doesn't eat it immediately, you just keep retrieving and they'll often come back for another shot. So thanks for watching and take care.